Shomra Byug. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Tight Room. Welcome back to On Shomra Byug. I'm the Michael of Michael and Benjamin's podcast. And I am joined this week by the man who has been digitally reinserted to the podcast post fact by Zach Schneider. It's Benjamin. It's me. I'm back. So, yeah, you. Uh, I can't react to him, obviously, because I wasn't there when his fil- scenes were filmed. So he's only going to react to me and I'm going to awkwardly react to him like Princess Leia. In, <laughs> That's yeah, so the last... funny, Michael. That's a great point that you've made. Yes. Oh, mm. no, this is a uh, yeah, this is awkward. Um, mm. I hope. T- team music? <laughs> team music for the podcast. Don't actually have anything music. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's drop that conceit, Ben, because that's going to get yeah, unpleasant get very, messy. very quickly. Benjamin, <laughs> yeah, go on. Of course, the reason that I've said that is it's apropos of what's happening this week, Benjamin. Perhaps not with digital trickery, but apparently, young Zacharin Snyder. Uh, is going to reinsert th- or insert <laughs> Jared Leto's The Joker into the Snyder Cut of the Justice League. Yeah, we're we're also uh, Michael this week. We're going to put Mein Kampf back on the bestseller list. Oh Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> that's the first step. Where that's the first thing you went to, Ben. Is we're it? Go- okay. We're going to digitally remove Harrison Ford from the original Blade Runner and replace him with Ryan Gosling because people preferred that in 2049. Yeah, but they they were both characters in the same film. That would be grossly confusing. Yes, it would, wouldn't it, Michael? Almost like inserting mm-hmm. Jared Leto's Joker into a retake of the Zack Snyder film Justice League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know if I agree with it, Ben. I don't know if I want it. On a similar note, Benjamin, Go I on. watched today on the YouTube some very interesting deep fakes. Oh, yeah. And one of them was uh, Harrison Ford deep faked into Solo, a Star Wars story. Oh, that's good, isn't it? That's a good it use. Was, it was very interesting, Ben. Very, very interesting. But the best one I watched was Ron Swanson deep faked into Wednesday Adams in Adams Family Values. Oh, my goodness. It's very oh, wow. good and very entertaining. Oh, wow. So what, what I'm saying is, Ben, we're probably only two or three years away from not needing actors anymore. Thank God. Thank yeah, God. just... Get some low, underpaid studio actor types and then just deep fake Brad Pitt on top of them. Or yeah, Jared Leto. I, th- I think it's going to be 90% Jared Leto. All films are just going to be Jared Leto. Yeah, Jared Leto in Gone with the Wind. Benjamin, when they make the, the deep fake technology accessible and cheap to the entire public, I'm going to remake the entire Justice League, but with every character played by Jared Leto. I thought you were going to say every character played by you, which I would actually watch. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, I'll do that too. Or half of the characters played by me and half of the characters played by Jared Leto. Yep. Done. Done. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Okay. uh, We've got a goal. Finally, the podcast has a goal, Ben. (laughs) Finally. Finally, there's a point to this <laughs> meandering nonsense. Benjamin, yeah, I don't really care if he puts Jared Leto in. Um, it's it's a weird choice, though. Everyone's least favourite Joker. Yeah, and you're just going to bring him back right after a very successful Joker kind of Yeah, they should have just put him in. Okay. His Joker in the Justice League would be very entertaining to watch because it just doesn't belong there. Yes, very um, confusing. <laughs> very confusing. Why are they? Why are those gods beating up that mentally ill man? What, what is happening? <laughs> What's going on? Have I accidentally watched an episode of The Boys? Yeah. How did this man come to be a club owner? I don't understand it. I don't understand the sequence of events that led to him becoming a creepy gangster. <laughs> um, yeah. Look, it doesn't bother me. I just think it's a really weird decision. Look, Benjamin, at this stage, any decisions that they make that get a bit of press for the Snyder Cut, that's good news for them. Yeah, yeah they'll take That's what it. they want, isn't it? They want yeah. they want uh, people talking about the Snyder Cut. Come on, on HBO Max. Yep. Get that Snyder Cut with Jared yeah. Leto, because that's what you yeah. want, is, isn't it? Isn't that's... that what everyone wanted? That's what people felt was wrong about the Suicide Squad? There wasn't enough Jared Leto in it, or there was too much Jared Leto in it? Uh, no, sir. It was Jared Leto who felt that's what was wrong with the Suicide Squad, that there wasn't enough of Jared Leto in it. Benjamin, oh. s- tangentially related merely by a tiny amount, I saw the um, the press release of the Empire magazine cover featuring the entire Suicide Squad cast. Oh, was it good? It's good. They're all there, the whole gang of them. And I thought if anyone could direct that Squadron Supreme movie we talked about last week, it would be James Gunn. 
Mr. James Gunn. We'll get him. We'll, yeah. we'll look. He's got. He's not very busy, sure, isn't he? He's not a popular director. No. He's not in demand. <laughs> How long is it going to be before he's sick of doing superhero team films, though? How long is it before he's he goes? Other people can do superhero t- team films. It's not just me. Yeah, but then everyone will say, but it won't be the same, James. It won't be the same. It won't be the same same without you, James Gunn, or your friend, Michael Rooker. Yeah. Or your other friend, Castle, from the TV show Castle. Nathan Fillion. Nathan Nathan Castle, Castle Fillion. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Very good. Very good. Michael, what else happened this week? I don't know. Did anything else happen? You had a list there. I did. Oh, we got a little glimpse, Michael. Yes. For our for our video game buffs in the audience, we got a little glimpse of Tom Holland as Mr. Nathan Drake from the Uncharted film that's oh. coming out. I've never played an Uncharted, Ben. Now, Michael, I have played Uncharted. Oh. Which is very rare for me to yes, have done a, vid- a video game. Y- yes. But I have played it. And um, one of the most interesting things, Michael, is Tom Holland is not a big man. No, he's very small and little. He's very small and little. A gymnast by any other name. Yeah, he's uh, a very tiny little fellow. Nathan Drake is a sizably gruff individual. And so you reckon you reckon there's a bit of Jack Reacher syndrome going on here? I think there's a touch of that going on, Michael. But I think it's also maybe going to be very early days, Uncharted. I, I don't right. know. But, um, but adults don't continue growing. That's true, and Tom Holland is an adult, despite yeah. outward appearances. He's very small, he's very small and tiny, but he is 25. Is he 25? Something like 25, yeah. Is he yeah. 25? Something like that. Benjamin, remember, Captain America's Civil War was years ago. Is he 25? That's I think he's, a, I, th- I don't know how old he is, I think he's about 25. Anyway, good for him. Yes. He seems to be yeah, doing very for well him. for himself. Yeah, I'd like to be a little tiny mini-man playing a, an action hero. Yeah, Thomas Netherlands, doing it for, for everybody, for short kings everywhere. I <laughs> see what you've done. Yeah. Because Holland, of course, Ben, is a is a region within the Netherlands. It is. It is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's yeah. very good. I yeah. had a bit of fun with that. I did. I did. Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Michael, there was other news, but it wasn't nearly as exciting, Michael. Um, what other news is there, Ben? It's here somewhere. Oh, okay. Michael, for you Go for on. you, and good friend of the podcast, Shane, excellent news. There's to be a 10th and 11th Fast and Furious film. And Justin Lin, one of the series' favourite directors, is to return for both. Very good. I will thoroughly enjoy it, Ben. I hope that 10 and 11 are a two-part extravaganza like uh, Infinity War and Endgame. Oh, God. And they bring back everyone. They bring back Han. They bring back... Um, that lady who was a cop in the second one. Well, they are kind of going to do that, aren't they? Like, that's... That's what they do in Fast and Furious. <laughs> yeah, I hope they bring back Hobbs and Shaw and I hope they bring back um, Idris Elba, whatever his character's name was. <laughs> Whoever that guy is. Yeah. And I hope it's in space and I hope they have to travel back in time to Fast and Furious 1 and stop Dominic Toretto from stealing those DVDs oh, and then bring the DVDs to the future and those DVDs turned out to be the source of all the problems the whole time. That might actually happen. You you may have written 10 and 11 because I guarantee yeah, I you there, there isn't a script right now. <laughs> I hope it's about time travel. I really do. And I hope they travel back in time and Paul Walker's there and they just deep fake him. Just deep fake the fuck out of him. Just deep fake him. Yeah, they can do that now. Oh, I don't know if that's in poor taste. That's probably in poor taste, is it? It's very, very poor taste. Yeah, very poor taste. But I think they should do it because if anyone can get away with profiting on poor taste, it's the Fast and Furious <laughs> match. That's true. It is their business model. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm all for it. Uh, bring back Giselle. <laughs> they can bring back Giselle, Ben. She's popular and famous now. She is. She is. Well, is she as famous as she was? Does she still have that currency? It's Gal Gadot. Shit, yeah. Sorry. That's- yeah, she's more famous, Ben. That slipped my brain. I, 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 for some reason, Michael, I forgot yeah. that we were talking about characters in the Fast and Franchise Furious, and I thought you were talking <laughs> about noted supermodel from the nineties and early two thousands. Giselle. Giselle Bunchen. No, I wasn't yeah, talking about Giselle Bunchen. She's, she's not in the Fast and Furious, or as you now call it, the Fast and Franchise Furious. <laughs> um, yeah, because. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just... Bring them all back, Ben. Where I'm at today. That's Bring where I'm them at all today. Back. Uh, yeah, let's get them all back, Michael. Put them all Bring. in one big thing. And then get Even James Even all the characters Gunn. who were killed. Bring back uh, Letty. Bring back uh, Han. Bring- oh, no, hold on. They've already done that. <laughs> they brought back everyone who was killed. <laughs> Luke matter. Evans will have back. to come back, though. He's not dead. He was in... Oh, was eight? he? 
Yeah. He teamed up with Deckard Shaw on the airplane to get the baby. Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, yeah. He was fine. He got over whatever put him in hospital. But that was the whole thing. His Deckard Shaw was out for revenge. I'm so confused. Yeah, but he's fine now. Um, I think it's become and very it, apparent to the listeners that I do not watch The Last of Your And it turned, out that, uh, it turned out that Charlize Theron was kind of behind it all the whole time. Dan, Dan, Dan. Which, to be honest, Ben, I've always suspected about Charlize Theron. Yeah, but she's, you know, she's she's got a great mastermind vibe. Yeah, she's a very sexy evil. Benjamin. Yes. Is there any other news? The only other news, Michael, that I think is of note is that yeah. Disney is continuing in its little uh, cultural cross expansion with the Disney Animation Studio. Um, right. You'll remember about, I think it's about three years ago now, we got Moana. I've heard of it, yeah. Uh, and that was very, very popular because of its Polynesian roots. And because it's quite good. And because it's quite bloody good, Michael. The Rock is in it. The Rock is in it as Maui. Maker mm. of the world, um, and they are to to have another one, Michael. This time set in China because the Chinese are a great bunch of lads. Ah, Mulan. I've heard of this guy. <laughs> no, no, Michael. This one is called Ray and the Search for the Last Dragon. Oh, but in Mulan she had a dragon. Yeah, but it's not Mulan. You see, it's not Mulan. But there's two Mulans already. Do yes, there's two Mulans Milan? already. This is a third Mulan. A, Mil- okay. a, a Mulan at trois, if you will. Right. Very good. Um, how to train your dragon. Yes, how to, how, how to train your dragon in, in China. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Okay, Dragon's I probably won't great bunch ben. of lads. I, I don't know if I'd be too interested in seeing that, Ben, I have to say now. Yes, it's going to be very interesting, Michael, given the geopolitical landscape, though I suppose most people with little tots probably don't care much about the geopolitical landscape as long as little Tom stops screaming while we watch the film. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Tom? Who's Tom and what's going on in his life, Ben? I'd like to hear more about this. Well, Tom is a precocious young man, Michael, of about three or yeah. four years old. Um, yeah. His main hobbies include frozen, Dragons. Uh, yeah. painting daddy's laptop screen and really making oh. sure that mummy doesn't get a moment's peace. Oh, good. And doesn't sound <laughs> like a great lad, to be honest. <laughs> no, he probably isn't. But it's okay because his, both his parents have tablets and they just give him that and he'll grow up to oh, be a great. well-adjusted young man with great social skills. It's going to be good. Very good. Okay, that's good. good. Good to know. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for filling us in on that, Ben. That's very useful. No problem. Michael. Yes. Did you watch any movies this week? I didn't, Ben. I watched um, episode two of the TV show Hellstrom. Right. Okay. And Do you remember we talked about Hellstrom, Ben? It's fine. It's still fine. It has absolutely no link to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That's good. Yeah. Well, I think they're going to talk about Roxxon and Roxxon Corp seems to be the linking factor in the TV shows. That is Marvel though, isn't it? It is Marvel. I mean, it is set in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, just it's not interacting with it. <laughs> it's just a side quest. It's a little standalone story and it's still fine. I'm it's... two episodes in and it's still fine. Well, that's, you know, that's what we need in these trying times, Michael. Things which are fine. <laughs> Things which are fine. Um, I completely forgot to mention this in the rundown, Michael, but... <laughs> um, speaking of things that are fine I have watched yeah. an entire series of a cultural phenomenon oh go on that has nothing to do with this podcast but I have watched Emily in Paris from start to finish on why did Netflix. you watch it Benjamin why did you watch the Netflix program Emily in Paris from start to finish on Netflix <laughs> Because my sister, why on earth is that why you were in such a grump this morning because my sister said to me do you want to watch this with me and I sat down my God, and I had every intention of watching one for a little you know sister bonding time just to yeah, you know yeah. strengthen the, the sibling bond strengthen the familial bonds yeah yeah and then Michael I found myself coming out the other side of it having watched the whole fucking thing oh no on it's accident on accident and Michael I was so taken aback by this because I have no strong feelings towards it whatsoever other than yeah. a driving want for Emily of Emily in mm-hmm. Paris to succeed Emily in Paris yeah oh do you it's bizarre but it's I heard bizarre ben, I've heard Ben she's a very unpleasant character she is Michael that's the fascinating thing mm. she's woefully American horrifically yeah. under the impression of American exceptionalism Right. And lives what could only be described as a charm life devoid of any challenge, adversity or anything that might constitute a bit of liking from the audience. Right. And yet. Yes, go on. And yet, Michael, I only want to see Emily get the client and score oh. the boy and oh. have a wonderful life in Paris. Oh. And I went and I looked this up, Michael, and this is happening across the globe. People are reacting so, in the exact same way. People want deeply unpleasant American girls to succeed. <laughs> Bizarre. 
<laughs> and you watch the show, Michael, and a, a huge swathe of people have had the exact same reaction. I shouldn't like Emily, but I do like Emily. Why do I like hmm. Emily? And there's actually a bit of study going into this, Michael. Is it and because she has notable eyebrows? It, she does have very... Lily Collins, eyebrow game on fleek. Um, mm-hmm. That dated reference brought to you by 2012. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, there's a bit of study going into this, Michael. And apparently the world is so piss poor miserable at the minute that yeah. audiences will actually root for something that doesn't mean they have to emotionally invest and be disappointed any more than 2020 already has. Is this why I like Damon Hellstrom? I mean, it's entirely possible, Michael. Oh. Apparently, there's a cultural wave happening where all of us just want to be kept in a nice little TV womb and safe oh. from the world. Well, that is interesting. I'm scared now. Yes, it is. It's very terrifying. But um, hmm. yeah, I do not recommend Emily in Paris. I do not think you will gain anything from watching it. Right. Other than a crush on Gabriel, the main man crush in it, who is just, Michael, to use the vernacular, an absolute yeah. fucking ride. Is um, he? Him? Yeah, he's just a big old ride. That's and funny, Ben, because I don't remember recording that role. No, we, they <laughs> deep faked you. Ah, oh, they deep faked me over a, a lesser paid studio actor. Okay, I got you. I got you. I got you. That they makes sense. Deep you. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Uh, Benjamin. Uh, yes. I did watch something which is on point for us this week. Yeah, I flew. I flew Benjamin. I broke quarantine. No, that's even more illegal that's than what I actually illegal. did. Which one did I do then? Um, boo! This is hard. I haven't seen the film The Witches, Ben, on HBO Max. I haven't seen it. If you had seen it, Michael, what what do you think would have happened in it? I think Benjamin that Anne Hathaway, the singer Anne Hathaway, and uh, uh, her way, yes. Oh, yes. She would be some sort of evil witch having an evil witch conference. Okay. And that evil witch conference would be interrupted by children. And there'd be scrapes and scrapes and adventures and excitement and horror in a in a bloody um, hotel. In a bloody hotel. Yeah, that's uh, that sounds remarkably similar to a movie that I watched this week, Michael. Starring, Which movie was that, Ben? Starring Angelica Houston called yes. The Witches and right. uh, it's actually very similar Michael there's a witch and she has a plan and she has a big conference in a hotel and some children get involved and there's scrapes and scratches oh that must be one of those things Ben where they've accidentally made two similar movies like Armageddon and Deep Impact yeah the same film due to corporate espionage that has yeah. led to them making remarkably similar films A Bug's Life and Ants Ben oh, do you remember that period in the late 90s early 2000s where that was just happening all over the place Michael Finding Nemo and A Shark's Tail Benjamin <laughs> Gas Gas Dante's Inferno Ben and Volcano Anymore? Oh, I can keep going if you like. I don't think that'll be very beneficial for the listeners. So listeners, okay, right. a little bit of a conceit there. Michael actually left Dublin on compassionate grounds and travelled yeah. over to that America. Um, the compassionate yeah. grounds were compassion for you, the listener. <laughs> the listener, um, yes, very good. And That's uh, got he us said, out of trouble then. The audience needs to know. And to be fair, everybody went, oh yeah, fair enough. In you get. And he In watched... On the airplane. HBO Max's brand new Anne Hathaway's starred uh, The Witches. I watched The Witches, Ben, by Roald Dahl. And I tell you what, Ben. Go on. It's fine. It's, oh, it's just fine. It's fine, yeah. Was it mentally scarring in any way, Michael? No, well, Ben, here's the difference, right? When did the original come out, Ben? 1990? 1990. And in 1990, I was an eight-year-old boy. Ooh. How old were you in 1990, Ben? I was a glint in my father's eye. You were oh. negative one, Ben, negative in 1990. One. You were negative one. You had travelled back in time. Like uh, Dominic Toretto will in the upcoming Fast and Furious 11. Yes. To, to stop your own conception. Uh-huh. But, Benjamin, yes. when I saw the first original Witches, it was quite spooky and scary and made a lasting impression. and made me go, oh, I don't want to watch that again. Because it's fucking terrifying. But now I'm just, a, I'm just a 38-year-old man then living in a lonely world. And I didn't find it scary at all. But there is some pretty freaky imagery in it. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that's good. I would... I would argue, Ben, that the witches are quite scary. Oh, that's good. They're heavily made up women, Ben. Okay. But the most, the most distinguishing feature that they have is that their lips go full joker. Oh. And their mouths, their mouths split open all the way up to their ears. Oh, so they've got unhingy mouths. Yeah, with big, sharp, pointy teeth in Ooh. them. Yeah, it's gross and scary. Ooh, that is gross and scary. Yeah, and all of them, Ben, can do it. And they're all like, ah, 
coming at you. That's pretty. That's a pretty good impression of Anne Hathaway. Yeah, um, it's uh, it's it's very interesting. It's it's good. It's fine. It's a uh, what I was taken by upon watching the film The Witch's Bed. Go on. Is it's quite an intimate little tale in many ways. Yes, it's almost like a bottle episode. Yeah, it's the story of two or three children. Yes. Disrupting a witch's conference. Which is unfortunate. At a hotel. Yeah, over the course of one day. Yeah. The whole story takes takes place over the course of a single evening, basically. It does indeed. And they ruin, they ruin an international witches' conference. If that was a modern film, Ben. Yes. There would be weeks and months of different sets and locations and set pieces and stuff like that. But not this but time, the, Michael. No, not at all. The biggest set piece of this whole thing is the boy, the title character, watching the witches' conference. And that's the bit that stands out. And that's the bit that stood out in the original film, Ben, too. Yeah, because it's just... It's gross and horrible. It's gross and horrible. Yeah. Now, Anne Hathaway doesn't undergo the transformation that um, Angelica Houston did. Where she turns into a big, beaky, bald lady. Yeah, they are all bald. Oh, that's good. And they've all got no toes, Ben. That set the, the women's alopecia movement back decades that film decades Ben I think it just set women back decades it's, yeah, I mean it it's not a, it's not a great film if you're into women but um, <laughs> if, you, if you've got any sort of time for them the, the gay community is grand well one half <laughs> of the gay community is grand <laughs> well the, I mean this this one the new one Ben the drag community will be delighted <laughs> because they, they do look quite like drag queens oh well, that's excellent then isn't it yeah the thing though is even when Anne Hathaway is horrible and she has a big splitty mouth and she's got horrible claws and no f- toes and, you know, it's still Anne Hathaway, though. Yeah, it's still Anne Hathaway. Anne Hathaway is still a very attractive lady. Yeah, that's not the case with Angelica Houston. Well, Angelica Houston is a very attractive no, lady. Sorry. Benjamin, and I'd, I would beg for you to take that back. I will take that back immediately. What I would say, Michael, is that the transformation leaves her a shadow of her former self and she's just oh, yeah. a hideous crone. A big, horrible, gross monster and thing. Yeah. But but the difference between the old one and the new one, Ben, is in the old one, which I've also watched, Ben. Good man. Um, uh, she, Anne Hathaway, not Anne Hathaway. Um, what's her name? Angelica, Angelica Houston. Houston. The, grand, the Grand High Witch, Ben. Yeah. She's much more of a witch than all the other witches. Yeah, she's a big old witch. She's a big old witch. <laughs> and all the other witches are little old witches. <laughs> And in the basic new film, witches, if you will, basic witches. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, that's great. Very well done. Very, very enjoyable. Um, but in the new one, Ben, yeah, they all look. They all look like the witches in the old one. They've oh. all got bald, gross heads, and um, horrible toes and clawy hands. Yes, right. And and Hathaway doesn't look that much different from all the others. Oh, okay. So it's it's collective witchery. Yeah, she's still a tiny bit sexy. Oh, that's tricky, isn't it? That's it's oh. a bit tricky. All right, has it it's awakened something in you? I I don't know if there's anything left to awaken in me, Ben. I think everything in me is already awake. <laughs> Fair enough. It's been awoke at um, this point in my life. Okay. Fair enough. Ben, have you ever? Um, <coughs> yeah. Have you ever? Um, have you ever? read like a horror book or you know things like Warhammer they have the Slanesh yeah. demons yeah. and and Clive Barker has his Cenobites and stuff yeah. and they're always described as like horribly on the point between attractive and gross yes that's what I think they went for with Anne Hathaway in this oh as opposed with Angelica Houston in the previous one where they just went make her as gross as possible make her a big old witch Make her a big old witch, make her as gross as possible. Here's a reference picture of podcaster Michael J. Leonard. Try and make her look as much like that as possible. <laughs> Get on it. And and, uh, and see how that goes. The deep fake technology deep, is deep a fake it if you have to. <laughs> deep fake it if you have to. And they're like, what's deep fake? And they're like, are you the Dominic Toretto from now or the Dominic Toretto from 2022? Jesus Christ. And he was like, just make the movie. <laughs> nice. You got it. Good yeah. man. Yeah. Um, yeah, look, The Witches, for me, Michael, was a, a personally very scarring film. Um, yes. And, uh, yeah, I think I mentioned that this week when we put it out to the, the podcast Instagram, but bloody creepy stuff, Michael. Just oh, Benjamin, 
I mean, if you're a 10 year old boy, a tiny little 10 year old boy like, um, Tom Holland, and you're watching this, <laughs> and you're seeing all those tiny little 10 year old boys getting turned into rats and being chased around by these gross, horrible monstrosities, it's, it's a proper horror film for kids. And this new one is a proper horror kid- film for kids. It's a, it's a proper horror and it's for kids. So well, that's it's a, good. It's a kids. It's, it's good a horror to see that film being for kids. Back. Yeah, I I didn't hate it. I thought it was fine. I didn't think you would hate it, Michael. I, I no. HBO Max in general yeah. does just fine. Yeah, yeah does it's just fine. fine. Um, it would be a lot more impactful if the original didn't exist. Obviously, obviously, because there are points where it's a shot for shot remake. The ballroom oh, scene really? is pretty much a shot for shot remake, but now she can fly and oh. change shape and stuff. Yeah, well, I don't know if that's as entertaining, Michael. Um, well, looking back, I watched the new one before the old one, Ben. Smart. And funnily enough, looking back, I went, oh, yeah, Angelica Houston is much more gross and horrible. But also, she can't really move. Yeah, yeah. Because of all the makeup and the prosthetics and stuff like She's that. She's not so as much of a threat. It's a very, No, it's just a very stationary scene. Oh. Where she's leaning mm. on a pedestal and shouting at other witches. You're not wrong, Michael. You're not wrong. Uh, look, look, listen. It's, it's, it's fine. It's good. It's one of the, the weirdest difference in it, Ben, is the setting. The hotel? Or it's, the set that- in, it's set in Alabama oh. in the 60s in the US. Why is that now? I don't know. I, uh, But it certainly brings in Lovecraft Country-esque racial Yeah, is that tensions. what it is? Is that what it's trying yeah, to do? There, there's more than a little... Now, it's for kids, Ben, obviously, so yeah. it's not about flat-out racism. Yeah. But, you know, there are a few people who raise an eyebrow that a black lady is bringing her... her grandson to stay in the swanky hotel that's interesting all, isn't it and all the staff are played by black actors and all the guests and managers are played by white actors so are we saying here that you can't necessarily trust a nice sweet southern old lady because she looks nice on the outside but could be a horrible racist on the inside is that is that the the aim of hbo well, max no, no none, none of this none of the sweet southern old ladies are witches oh okay the sweet southern old ladies are the grandma the Norwegian character in the in the original in the original film, yeah. But now she's from Alabama. Interesting. What's the name yeah. of the actress who plays her? Who's won an Oscar? Octavia Olivia, Spencer. Octavia Spencer. That's it. Yeah, she's really good. Yeah, she usually is. I've I've always enjoyed the work of Octavia Spencer. And going back then to what you said earlier about um, Harrison Ford being deep faked out of Blade Runner. I didn't say that. You did. Oh, I did say but that. You <laughs> <laughs> did. Um, one of the oddest <laughs> things in the new version is a, and it very much reminded me of Blade Runner. There's a low energy, unenthusiastic narration provided by Chris Rock. What? Yeah. Now there is a twist in the reason why, but I'm not, I won't get into it. But it's it's a little bit off putting, to be honest. Yeah. Narration seems to be off putting in general these days, Michael. It's a weird. Yeah, get rid of it. Yeah, yeah it's a bit, get rid of it. But yeah. Michael, Go on. we should probably tell the listeners why we watched Roald Dahl's classic The Witches in two different forms this week. Because it's Spookoween! It's Spookoween! Um, as you're listening to this, uh, the following Saturday to this will be Spookoween! Uh, it'll be a Corona-ween, but we have to yeah, stay inside. Yeah, for us anyway. It's an yeah. inside ween The greatest right. Halloween of our generation, Ben, ruined by Corona. Very nice. Is that a Allen Ginsberg? Yeah. Owl reference, cool. Um, no, it wasn't. <laughs> that was pretty good. Uh, I was like, okay, new levels, new levels. Michael's been listening to my other podcast. Um, Collecting uh, p- poems. Poems, a poetry podcast. Uh, but we put it out to the listeners after Dr. Stephen J. Cadwell got in touch yeah. with us and said, guys, what even is witches? What even are they? What's going on? Um, we put it out to the listeners and we decided to do a bit of research ourselves. So this week's main topic will be all about mm. the witches, Michael. Mm. Yeah. What are they? What's going on with them? What are they? What's going on with them? Well, let me tell you, Michael. Okay, let you me, tell me, Ben. What even are witches? Traditionally, Michael. Yeah. A witch is a, a a crone or an elder lady. Yeah. In certain depictions, with a big old pointy hat. Mm. She probably has a cat or two. Yeah. And a broom. A, a wart on her nose. A wart on her nose. And Michael, you probably shouldn't let your kids around them, right? No, they they they'll have them away. Yeah, uh, but Michael, it stretches back so much further than that, and most people will already know that uh, who listen to this podcast. But for those that don't, Michael, branding women as witches has been going on for an awful long bloody time. <laughs> now, Benjamin, I'm going to interrupt you very briefly. Go on. Is that a coat rack behind your head? Uh, no, it's a shirt hanging up on my easel. 
Okay, because it has accidentally created the appearance of you having a witch's hat. Oh, that's good. I've taken it down yeah. now. You've ruined it. <laughs> I've ruined it was it kind of cool though there for a second. <laughs> I've ruined it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've ruined it completely. <laughs> Sorry. That's fine. Tell us more about witches, Ben. Uh, so, Michael, <clears throat> this goes way, way back in time uh, to, the to the medieval the period. Times. To the medieval period, when the term witch and witchcraft started being thrown around a lot more. Mm. Now, generally speaking, Michael, there are lots of theories on why people branded women as witches with little to no evidence. And the primary one that has emerged in retrospective kind of research and investigation into this is that any time a woman kind of gained any kind of power in medieval society, yeah. anytime she got a leg up in society or had knowledge that a man might not have, for example, midwifery mm. uh, or the likes, basically a jealous old man would come along and be like, oh, I don't like that she knows how to do that and I don't know how to do that. A bloody She's witch. probably a witch. She's, She's probably a witch getter. Probably a witch. Uh, and that led to some pretty horrible things, Michael. Um and that happened all around Europe. Europe was the kind of classic era for that uh, way back in the medieval period. And that all came about thanks to a book written by a German guy called... Klaus. No, it wasn't Klaus. He wrote a book called the... the Mal Ma I'm going to get this wrong. wrong. Malleus? No, it's the Malicus Malef... Sorry, Malleus Maleficarum. Right. Yeah, the hammer of the witches. The ham. Oh, good man, Michael. Good man. Yeah, uh, I uh, I speak Latin. And it was um, it was written by a guy called Heinrich Kramer. Oh, Klaus, I know him well. And Heinrich Kramer or Klaus um, was a German lad, and he had a bit of an axe to grind women. Looking back on the text now, even the Catholic Church at the time was like, oh, he's a bit weird, isn't he? Even the Catholic Church thought Even he, in the, the medieval Church. period, thought he was a bit much. <laughs> they were like, oh, settle down, Heinrich. There's oh, no bloody need. hell, Heinrich. There's no need. But he created this book and it became, I suppose, the, the Hammer of the Witches or the Malicus Maleficarum became the, yeah. the kind of the Witchfinder Manual mm. that people carried around. And this is where most of the satanic tropes of witches came from. Ben. Yeah. I always thought that was a Spanish guy. Nope. Nope. Witchfinder Manuel. <laughs> uh, hello, did you know where the witches are? <laughs> That's going to get us in trouble somewhere. Uh, <laughs> but anyway. Hello, he, my name is Witchfinder Manuel. He set about creating this, quite frankly, awful book. And it's just filled with misogyny and strange things. And it's just all the kind of gripes and fixations that... L. Heinrich had with women kind of got turned into well that's witchcraft <laughs> and yeah, we yeah. should burn them yeah and then he wrote Sin City I guess uh, he probably did he went on to become yeah. noted comic scribe and slight misogynist Frank Miller so anyway yeah I see what I've done when Frank Miller was writing Hammer of the Witches which does actually <laughs> sound like a Frank Miller novel it does he probably did um, <laughs> he came up with what he decided were kind of the, the tenets of what a witch was. So right. witchcraft back in that day was mm -hmm. defined by six ritual acts. So oh. it started with a pact entered into with the devil. Oh, yeah. Sexual relations with the devil. Oh, good. Aerial for aerial flight for the purpose of attending black masses, which is the witches' sabbath when they all On the get broom, together. Yeah. yeah, an assembly presided over by Satan himself. Oh, well, you think he'd be busy? You think he'd be busy? But no, he attended every last black mass that was ever organised. Okay, uh, and then the slaughter of children, the practice no, of maleficent them. magic, and the slaughter of children. Now, get rid of them. He came up with his little clues for finding this kind of thing. So you had to mm. look and see if a woman was marked by the devil. And really, Michael, it didn't matter what the, the mark was. They could have a scratch from working on the farm all day. And if, you, if they were accused, then you could turn around and be like, ah, ah, ah. That's the devil's mark. That's the devil's mark. Uh, and the other popular one, Michael, was a third nipple. That was a, a big oh. one. Um, surprisingly, very few women had a third nipple. Mm. Um, now... That went on to progress, Michael, and that kind of persecution of of really women. It's it's witches as we know them, Michael, are predominantly female in their depiction. Yeah, uh, there are some exceptions, but notably that that kind of rose and fell in in sweeps, but it really swept across Europe in the Middle Ages from fourteen from sorry from 
Oh, I have it here. 1432 onwards. So that kind mm. of medieval... The bad times. The, ba- the bad times. It's called the burning times, if you're into witchcraft mm. history. That's what it's called. And then it progressed into places like Salem and Puritan societies ah, over there in the US. And that's where we get films like The Witch, which came out two, three years ago. I think a bit more even, Ben. It could be a, a bit very more. good film. Very good very, film. Very, very unpleasant film and unsettling film. Not great. I didn't like it, Ben. It upset me. It was a genuinely unnerving film, Michael. Yeah. Black film. It had Anya Taylor-Joy in it. Yes. And baby sacrifices. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about And I'm against one of those things. (laughs) Tune in next week to find out which one. Um, Yes. Cliffhanging with Michael and Benjamin. So, uh, that kind of progressed into then. And then we have the famous Salem Witch Trials. Benjamin. Yes. Nearly every show or movie or anything else about witches always does a joke about how in the Salem witch trials they only got the the fake witches because the real witches knew magic. Yeah, I mean, that's a classic one. It's like, oh, oh, if you're so old and ancient, how come you didn't burn the stake? Because uh, real witches are clever and we don't get caught. Yeah, because they like, got away. Yeah, they just got the normal washer women. Yeah, which is a great way of a witch saying, yeah, I don't care about other women as long as I'm all right, which isn't really yeah. very sisterly. Um, well, you know. sometimes witches are not good eggs, Ben. Sometimes they are good eggs. It I depends. mean, it, it really depends, Michael, on which one you read. But, Michael, that led yeah. me to... to read into our topic a little bit because a lot of those focus an awful lot more on the American concept of witch burning and witches than they do on the European form. But right. there's lots of different types of witches, Michael. And Oh, go on. We put it out to the listeners and we said, well, look, look, tell me, tell me, what mm-hmm. kind of witches should we include here? And uh, one, one young lady, Hannah, uh, gave me a huge swathe of stuff to go off. Something I had completely overlooked, Michael, which was American Horror Story Season 3. Oh, Coven. Coven. Yeah. yeah. So I went and did a little bit of digging on this. So massive thank you to Hannah for that one. And we found lots of different types of witches from different yeah. eras, which is real good, yeah. Michael. So in American Horror Story Coven... Yeah, <laughs> Sarah Paulson plays kind of a Professor X witch, and she yeah, takes she's in a Professor L- X of witches, <laughs> lots of little gifted female witches, and she tries to to teach them how to use their gifts, which are no good, Michael. <laughs> um, she tries to teach them how to control them and use them in ways that they would prefer to use them, and through that, we're introduced to so many different forms of magic. We have um, Marie Laveau, who's played by Angela. Yeah, she's Bassett. a voodoo witch. She's a voodoo witch, big old spooky voodoo witch. Yeah. Uh, we have Fiona Good, who's, I suppose, an Angelica Houston witch's witch. She's mm. a very kind of kept, kempt um, woman who's in a control. A proper witch. Has mm. a bit of power, but is actually kind of a hideous human being. Um, mm. We have resurrection witches, necromancer witches. We have more voodoo witches we have good witches white witches Stevie Nicks is in it as a Stevie white Nicks witch Stevie Nicks is in it from um, from the band Fleetwood Mac and that led me Michael to look into Stevie Nicks and it turns out their famous song Rhiannon yeah is about a Welsh witch from way oh, back in the medieval here. period so Rhiannon, Rhiannon is all about, is about a about famous witches. Welsh folktale about a oh. witch Benjamin mind blown in, in American Horror Story season 3 Coffin the witches are very much like X-Men, aren't they? They all they get are. one specific power that they're best at. Yeah. Yeah. So there's Queenie, and Queenie is a human voodoo doll. Mm. Oh, yeah. She can stick things in herself and hurt other people. Yeah, exactly. There's Emma Roberts, whoever she plays. I can't remember her name. Madison. She plays Madison. And she's kind she of does, a telekinetic yeah. carry witch, I suppose, mm. if you want to look at it that way. You have Zoe. And, and Zoe's ill-defined. <laughs> Zoe's got a bit of everything going on. Um, but she's a much more compassionate creature than the others. There's, Who played Zoe? Uh, sorry? Who played Zoe? I, I cannot remember. It's not Annie Taylor Joy. <laughs> no. Are you just going to list who it isn't? It's not Anne Hathaway. It's not Anne it's Hathaway. Not Angelica Anne Houston. Joy, not Angelica Houston. Uh, oh, I can't remember who played Zoe. I'll look it up. She's in Doesn't all matter. the episodes of American Horror Yeah, I can see her a, face. I just can't remember An her name. American Horror Story regular. And then you have... Uh, is it Mitzi? I can't remember her name, but she's a necromancer. She's a resurrectionist. That's what she does. She brings people back from the dead. Um, 
and it's really interesting because there's all kinds of different witch lores brought in. Um, Papa Legba from voodoo culture is brought in. Um, bloody <laughs> Kathy Bates is there Michelle as Madame Delphine. My mother has just added one there. Michelle Pfeiffer is a witch from a completely different thing, but she's decided to, to addition on in there. Um, What's Michelle Pfeiffer a witch in? She's a witch in the Neil Gaiman Stardust. She is a witch thing. in the old game. Uh, and I'll be getting right. into that a little bit later. We'll get we'll get into that as we go along. But the the key tenet or tenet of yeah. American Horror Story season three coven is that there is no such thing as all bad witches. There's good witches. There's bad witches. There's real bad witches, and then there's just mm. horrific people that you don't want around. Because that's very different from the sh- the movie Witches, Ben. When the witches aren't even really women. No, they're just monstrous creatures that they're, parade they're demons, around yeah. as the demons pretending to be women. Yeah. So I I think some of the key factors in American Horror Story Coven is very much a. It, there are a lot of strong feminist arcs of women reclaiming their own power through bad situations or socioeconomic depravity. There's the idea of generational curses, inheriting things from previous generations, traumas of past generations of women. It's really a fascinating little uh, witch story, Michael. So I'd strongly recommend. I've, I've only watched one or two episodes, but I did quite a bit of research for this. And I will be Taisa watching the rest. Farmiga. Is her name? Thank you. Thank you for that, Michael. Um, and that led me to continue on, Michael, in our little odyssey of, of witches and things like that. And interestingly, the first instance of destigmatization of witches in right. literature, where they're not all bad eggs. Yeah. Right? Is actually The Wizard of Oz by Frank L. Baum. Oh. The first very mainstream acceptance of witches as human beings who are flawed but also can be good because there's two wicked witches there's two wicked witches and two good witches exactly and there's an exact line in the text where Dorothy says how can she be a wicked witch I thought all witches were wicked and the good fairy Galindra Galinda I think Galinda just Galinda Glin- it could Glinda. be Glinda. Glinda. Yeah. Could be Glinda. Glinda the good witch. Glinda the good witch says, "Ah, that's a common mistake." No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, Don't be so ignorant, you absolute <laughs> bitch. Glinda Listen says, "Here, you presumptuous I'm little good- miss." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm a good witch. Well, I mean, you certainly aren't giving the appearance of that with that attitude. And that really kicks off, I suppose, the the modern era because that was that was published in 1930. Something, but it wasn't critically analysed until around the 1950s. But Benjamin, yes. doesn't good witches or bad witches aside, doesn't that give us our image of the witch, the current image of the witch? Well, that's that's really interesting. So the the, the certainly the wicked witch is the the one that dominates pop culture representation of witches. Green She's skin, got a big, big hooky nose, big hooky nose, and the cat. Big pointy hat like you. All black, just like me, just just there, yep. right there. Yeah. Um, and the the really interesting thing about that, Michael, is it's not necessarily okay. So this is really interesting. So you're gonna have to bear with me on this one. Okay, I'll bear with you. Frank L. Baum yeah. married the daughter of a famous suffragettist, right? Suffragette, I think, is the word you're looking for. Yeah, I probably should have just said that. Why did I say suffragettist? Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, uh, added a few more. <laughs> A few more endings on it for some reason. For some reason. And the mother of his wife was the woman who originally his mother-in-law. exposed... Uh, yeah, sorry, I just said... Mo- his mother-in-law <laughs> was the yeah. woman who, ori- who originally pushed people to look into uh, the absolute cruelty of witch trials throughout history. Get out of here. And in doing yeah. that, found the common yeah. tropes and aesthetic considerations that were given to witches. So if you look at mm. art throughout history that depicts witches. Yeah, I won't. That's why you're here. Fair enough. Um, a lot of them are quite young. This idea of the crone mm. came much later. Um, really? As we went along, right? So, the the caps that you see, the pointed hat... The is pointed witchy hat. ...actually a reference to the European dunce cap, which was a cone of shame that was placed on the head of witches during that time. So that evolved oh. into the big black hat with the pointed steeple. Um, mm. And that went on. But the only reason that Flank Elmbaum knew all this is because his wife heavily revised his work for him and edited his work for him. So she was like, well, it would be better if... Da-da-da-da-da. She had learned that all from her mother. 
Oh. It is bloody fascinating, Michael. Get how it all here. links in. Yeah, it's mad. Madness. And did they melt if you throw water on them? No, that was all Frank Elbaum. Okay. But that would have been derived from the habit of dunking witches. Yeah. Um, which was the, the classic kind of catch-all because basically uh, whenever a witch finder had run out of evidence, and I use that yeah. with air quotations heavily. Witch finder Manuel, yeah. Witch finder Manuel, he would say, yeah. just give him a dunk. And if they die, yeah. they were human. But if they float, they're a witch, which is very convenient for a witch finder Manuel. <laughs> Good way of getting rid of the women either way, really, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty fucking well, great. Feckin' troublesome women, then. <laughs> it's feckin' great. Um, and so that's where the, the water as a weakness came. But Frank Elbaum was very much writing for children. And I suppose drowning her in a lake probably would not be the best. Much. <laughs> Hold her head under, Dorothy. <laughs> and the tin Just a few more stomped kicks. on her head <laughs> until yeah. she didn't get up anymore. Until oh, the gross. bubble stopped. Um, and that's probably why we don't represent that one. But I put it out to the listeners as well, Michael, because... You and I have covered quite a few, um, and we got a holy host of different witches uh, from Ben, fiction. I disrupted you there. You were going to talk about good witches. Yeah, sorry. Getting back to good witches, Michael. Frank L. Baum started that trend of the notion of good witches, and that was helped mm. ably by a guy, and his name is G.B. Gardner. Okay. And great GB, British Gardener. Great British Gardener, which is on the BBC every Tuesday evening from 7. Yes. Starring Mary Berry and some English gardener. Probably Monty Alan Dwan. Titchmarch. Alan Titchmarch. Um, but basically, G.B. Gardner, in combination with this, started the Wiccan religion that you hear people talking about today. Oh, there's a lot of that in Buffy. Yeah, which is the concept of a white witch. Mm, but that was racist. actually only really introduced from the 19... The, I think it's the 1940s onward. That idea of okay. it as an established religion. And G.B. Gardner originally wrote it as fiction and then went on to found covens. He, he went on to be kind of a, a, a witch, I suppose. for lack Or of, a warlock. Or a warlock. But it really depends because a lot of people say that men can be witches. It's no, it's no issue. Um, okay. But I think in doing that, and this is going to get me in trouble, I think it pretty much denounces the persecution that women went through <laughs> under no. that title if you just start throwing it around that it can be anybody, which can be anybody. But that's mm. the way it is modernly defined. So I don't know. Um, it gets complex. I'm not going to go into the religious aspect of it, Michael. I'm far more interested in the the representations in fiction. So to do that, probably some of the most beloved versions of good witches, Michael, are Terry Pratchett's witches, Granny Weatherwax. And yeah, so we're always talking fun. about them. Yeah, they come up a lot. Yeah. They come up a lot, Michael. Um, we also put it out to other people. There are good witches in lots of things. Yeah, lots Buffy. and lots of things. Uh, Buffy, we've Willow, got Willow, Willow and Tara Ben, where a, a witch, beloved icon. Witchcrafts and Wiccans, they were uh, basically a metaphor for lesbian love. Oh, good for them. Good for but them. But also, she went evil and mad. Yeah, it, that kind of feeds into the hysteric woman in the attic trope, which is tricky enough in itself. But a uh, little bit, and of course, Ben, that Tara was one of the first women ever to be fridged on TV. Oh yeah, she she got a good old fridging. She got well and truly fridged. Yeah. Stuck up in the, the deep freeze section of the old fr- mm-hmm. No good. No good, yeah. Michael. But we have other examples as well, Michael. As I said, Stardust has the whole concept of good witches versus bad witches. No, you didn't say that. That was your mam just now. <laughs> yes, my mother had it in there. But um, that's based very much on the Weird Sisters of Shakespeare. Oh. And the Weird Sisters of Shakespeare are three. The Sisters Three who meet on the moor and do horrible things. And Neil Gaiman took that inspiration and made the novel Stardust. And in Stardust, there are three witches led by Michelle Fife's. Yeah, Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah, I, I know her. Michelle Pfeiffer. Her work. Noted inspiration for Michael in all things. Uh, yes. And she is part of that coven with her sisters. And they do all the nasty things like Eye of Newt and Innard of Dog and all the bloody dark stuff. But it turns out, Michael, that Charlie Cox's mum in yeah. that is a white witch. She's a good old, oh. good old lady. She's a good old lady. She's a white witch. And, Daredevil's uh, mum. There's that whole debate of, of you know, is magic good or bad? And it's neither. Depends on who wields it, baby. Mm, exactly. Uh, Except we, in the film The Witches, then it's just bad. Then it's just pure bad because they're all demons. Yeah. They're no good. Because they're, they're all bad, demons. Bad blokes. Um, 
But moving on from there, we got a huge push, Michael, towards Good Witches and Wizards, and that's largely in the late 80s uh, with things like Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Harry what about Potter. the what about the television show Bewitched? Bewitched? Oh yeah. Well, Bewitched would have been the 1960s, a very different iteration of witches. Oh, good point, Michael. Excellent work. Yeah, she was just sexy and around the place going, look at me, I'm just a domestic housewife who was also terrifyingly super powered. Let me give my nose a little wiggle. Boom. Don't mess with me or else I'll alter all of reality. Yeah, it's not great really. Not, not a good thing uh, to piss your wife off. I think that's... I think that's going to be the main inspiration for the upcoming television show WandaVision featuring the Scarlet Witch. Oh, do you reckon? Where, where reality will yes. just tumble around around us. Yeah. Tumble down around us is what I meant to say, but my mouth mm-hmm. just wouldn't let mm-hmm. me get that out. Benjamin, we can't bloody talk about witches, though, without talking about the film which invented the concept of drag queens. <laughs> <laughs> no, Michael. Hocus Pocus would... would the, the Hocus Pocus community would never forgive us. They'd never forgive us, man. We'd have to go back and record a section and insert it into the podcast so that people w- wouldn't be upset. Yeah, and they'd never know. They'd never know, Ben, because that's not what we've done. Benjamin. <laughs> yeah. Funnily enough, Benjamin, Hocus Pocus 1990s Hocus Pocus? No, what year was it, Ben? 1993. 1993 is Hocus Pocus, Ben, a critical and financial failure at the time. Flopperoo. An absolute flop, an absolute bomb. Despite starring, uh, what's his name? Omri Katz from out of Erie, Indiana. We've talked about this before, I'm absolutely sure. Have we? Yeah, we've definitely talked about it because I'm always going on about Omri Katz from out of Erie, Indiana. Who is Omri Katz and what is Erie, Indiana? Erie, Indiana was a TV show in the 90s, uh, a kind of X-Files for kids. Right. It was a a weekly kind of sitcom setup, but he encountered spooky, scary things mm. and had to deal with them. Oh. Very similar to his character in the film Hocus Pocus, Ben. Very good. Very good. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of interesting things in Hocus Pocus, isn't there? Um, B- Bloody Sanderson Sisters, Ben. The only time I've ever found Sarah Jessica Parker attractive. Yeah, because it never looks like Sarah Jessica Parker ever again. <laughs> Is that mean about Sarah Jessica Parker, Ben? I don't ben? know. Probably. Uh, yeah. y- you'll find Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, and the third witch, who I remember by her name in the, the movie, Winnie, but I never yeah. knew the actress. I could never... Kathy Jimmy. Thank you very much. There's your dad. There's my dad out the back there now. He's behind you washing He's the windows. Cleaning the windows. He's forever washing windows. <laughs> forever washing windows. Uh, I thought you were about to say, there's uh, Sarah Jessica Parker behind you now. And I was like, oh, no. Right. Um, no, no, it's your dad. Probably one of the best uh, representations of dangerous magic I can remember, Michael. The, the sheer on. evil of the book is right. fascinating to me. And the way that Bette Midler's Sanderson sister can call it is still etched in my mind where she does the big long book thing. Um, yeah. Which is very spooky, Michael. Very, very spooky. It's a, overall as a film, it's not as spooky as Roald Dahl's The Witches. Probably not, Michael. It's nowhere near as much of a horror as that. But they do hunt down children, Michael. That's what they're doing. They do. They're going to they sacrifice They do hunt down children. Like, that's what they're out to do. They're out to sacrifice somebody. There's a bloody Salem the cat in it. You know, Ben, that's the same cat. Yes, you We've told me two weeks ago. We've definitely talked about this before. Yeah. You told we me this two weeks ago. We've definitely talked about this before. I'm having a deja vu. Um, and then there's Billy Michael, noted actor Doug Jones, who played Billy in Hocus Pocus, who is the kind of necrotic, resurrected boyfriend of one of the Sanderson sisters. Yeah, but the Sanderson sisters, Ben, they are just humans, aren't they? They're not um, They're not demons like in the film Witches. They're, they're imbued by Satan, though. They have several hilarious moments where they go out on Halloween and there's a lad dressed up as the devil and they're kind of like, oh, my lord and master. And your man is like, oh, oh there's Satan. I've scored with three ladies. Very nice. Um, you, you would think he would be too busy to attend all of the black masses, Ben, but apparently not. <laughs> those, those origins, Michael, are all from Salem because the Sanderson sisters were burned in Salem. And, and they came back. Is that what happened? They they come back because they read from the book. It's it's got real uh, Evil Dead Two vibes. Uh, yeah. Because the they break into the the Sanderson sisters home, which is a museum in Salem, mm-hmm. and they complete the ritual with the book, and the book brings them back. As a result of that ritual, and to get immo- I think it's to gain immortality, so that they don't fade when the sun comes up. They have no, to they sacrifice have to a, a child. Yeah, and they have to they have to get to work, uh, and that's the the kind of central conceit of the book. There's, I remember understanding magic very much as a threat when I saw it because they put a spell on the whole town, and then the children won't listen, or sorry, the adults won't listen to their children. 
Ah. After that, they, they, they have the famous rendition of I Put a Spell on You um, by Bette Midler. Uh, ben, apparently I watched this with my family when I was a kid and I must have been 10 at the time and apparently it embarrassed my family because I kept asking, what's a virgin? <laughs> what a great question for a young buck to ask in an Irish household in the early yeah. 90s. Yes, would you wish to apparently. Would you, you don't need to know. Yes, yeah, someone who's never had a kiss. Someone who's never had a kiss. An Irish virgin. Someone yeah. who's never had a kiss. But Michael, to say yeah. that it had, despite being a cultural and, sorry, despite being a commercial flop, to say that it's had a lasting cultural impact would be an understatement. It's gone on, Ben. To, it's it's the Halloween film, Benjamin. I was supposed to be going to see it next week at a drive-in cinema and it was going to be my first ever drive-in cinema experience and it's now cancelled. Oh. Thanks, COVID. Tits. That's not Thanks, good. Thanks, Winnie Sanderson. Thanks, Winnie Sa- <laughs> Who is COVID for some reason? Uh, she's. I assume she's cursed us with COVID. Cursed us with COVID. Uh, anyway, moving on from there, Michael, there are lots of different narratives that have kind of spun out of that. Benjamin, there are way too many witches in popular culture oh, for us so to cover many. this in a single episode. Yeah, we'll probably do a part two at some point, Michael. But or it, part one to seventy-five. No, I mean we could do seventy-five episodes and just turn this into a witch podcast. What do you reckon? Yeah, we could. We could probably get yeah. a Wiccan on with us. No, we probably should. We tell us. We? Yeah, yeah, we should send out a call, Ben. Ask for a Wiccan, quick. If anybody is <laughs> is hugely into witchcraft and the history of witchcraft, or is a w- practicing Wiccan, you are more than welcome to come on this show and educate us a bit further. Because uh, I'll be honest, our week's worth of research probably does not do any justice to the grand scope and breadth of this particular thing. That's a great idea, Ben. Uh, yeah, I think it is. We should probably try and do that. Uh, so, if you know anyone who might be interested in helping us out on a future episode. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Logging this down. We can do it socially distanced. We'll show you how to set up all your microphones and things so you can have a little uh, bloody Skype chat with us. Yeah, I'd, I'd like that, Ben. That I really way. enjoy that. Um, I would also really enjoy that. I think it's worth pointing out that there are other things given to us. Some very Irish witches, Michael, given to us as we go along. We have uh, Grop Bags, who was on a, a really old TV show. She was a, a villain character on an old TV show. Which I didn't know anything about, but yeah, I'm leaving you hang yourself on that. Uh, you spend old man Cadwell, <laughs> uh, or Doctor Cadwell, as he's he's old man Cadwell on on the gram. Him and relentlessly Rachel OG Glop here on the podcast are huge fans of Grop Banks. Um And then Rachel said the Whirly Gig Witch, which What's I could that, not find. It's from Johnny Forty Coats, which is an old show from RT Two. Apparently, um, I couldn't find. Uh, oh wait, hang, right, on, so- hang on, hang on. No, I don't know. Sorry, my mother's attempting to help me in my research again uh, from the side there. She's saying Wurzel Gummidge, which I don't know anything about and I can't add to. So you don't I'm know gonna... anything about Wurzel Gummidge. Do you? He's a blo- Yeah, of course I do. He's a scarecrow who comes to life. Oh, there you go. And he's in love with Aunt Sally. She's a porcelain doll lady. Oh, fuck. You need um, to educate yourself on late 70s and early 80s Irish and British TV, Ben. I don't think I do. I don't think I do. Uh, but anyway, It is a fascinating depiction. It has its roots in female persecution, I suppose. And it's a really interesting thing. Ladies and gentlemen, neither of us being experts on that kind of thing, we really would like to hear from you if you do know a bit more about witchcraft lore. And I'd say I'd say you are a bloody expert on female persecution, Ben. Uh, well, that's just because I'm a horrible misogynist, Michael. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I was implying. Yeah. A terrible, terrible misogynist. I am actually a time traveller. I time travel back in time with Tom Toretto and I wrote Hammer of the Witches with Frank Miller. Yeah. It's a co-author text. <laughs> Yeah, very good. Uh, Because I'm a horrible human being. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, what witches did we miss? Who Which witches did we miss, Ben? You missed the trick there. I did miss it in the podcast post earlier in the week. I just missed it there. Um, Who are your favourite witches in pop culture? Which witches make you What about the witches... What about the witches from the TV show Charmed, Ben? Oh, we forgot about them as well, Michael. We forgot about them, the Hallowell sisters. Again, I think that falls into X-Men territory. It does a little bit. Ben, what about the witches from the TV show Sabrina the Teenage Witch oh, and the other ma'am. TV show The Thrilling Adventures of Sabrina? So when are we going to do a part two on this? Cause the, we have to do part I've, one to 75. I've there are so loads. many witches. What about loads. witches from the TV show Supernatural? Oh, yeah, shit. <laughs> what about uh, what about Ben? What about witches from the TV show Buffy or witches from the video game series Bayonetta? Have you ever seen that? Oh that's yeah, mad. the weird hair suit. Yeah, that's fucking bonkers. Mad Japanese witches. 
Oh, okay, we're going to have to do this again. God damn it. We're going to have to do a whole other episode on Witches Ben. We've only scratched the surface with their horrible claws and pointy noses. Okay, we'll start a brand new podcast called The Witching Hour with Ben and Michael. Um, and we'll just get guests on who can teach us a little bit more. Stevie Nicks, if you're out there, because I know you like to play a witch on TV. Would you like to come on the podcast? Would yeah, you? I mean, it's getting Stevie Nicks on the podcast would be a bit of a coup, Ben, I have to say. Yeah, that would probably set us up for life, Michael. Um yeah. But yeah, let us know uh, who we missed down below in the comments if you're on YouTube. If you're listening to us anywhere else, you can get in touch with us in the following ways. We're on Instagram, at Shomra Bjog, S-E-O-M-R-A-B-E-A-G. It means tiny room in Irish. You can drop us an email um, at www.shomrabjog.com. It still means tiny room in Irish, but not really. I mean, it means small room. Yeah, but it almost means tiny room. The translation of Tiny Room doesn't work as well. It was very hard to find Tiny Room in a nice, clean translation that sounded good. Yeah, so yeah. we didn't really do it. Um, if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, ladies and gentlemen, the best thing you can do for us if you enjoy this podcast is give us a review. Give us a review. Just go on there. A good slap, slap there. Slap a five stars, a four stars. Yeah. I'll take a three no, and sorry. a half stars. No. We all take a three and a half. Get out of here with your three and a half. You do three and a half, we'll send a curse on you. (laughs) We'll put a bloody curse on you. Angelica Houston will put a curse on you. To quote a very good friend, Michael, you're not supposed to curse people. You're supposed to curse situations. Uh, But we'll we'll get into that another time. Uh, So... I don't know what that means. Uh, yeah. But we'll figure, we'll figure we, that out another week. That's on the next episode of the podcast. So, ladies and gentlemen, do give us a review wherever you listen to us. That would be great. We'd really appreciate it. And we'll probably avoid putting an owl hex on you. Or finding yeah, someone we'll who actually knows how to do that. And having them do it. Uh, join us in a week's time, post-Halloween, where we'll be talking about space cults. Are we doing space cults? Is oh, it cool. space cults? I think it's space cults on November 1st. November are we talking 2nd? about Ben? Are we talking about cults who worship space or cults in space? Cults in space. Okay. Cults right, in cool. space. Uh, I'm gonna. F- well, doesn't matter. You'll hear an announcement about it on the Instagram. Thank you to everybody who contributed to this week's episode. We really appreciate it. It really helps me to narrow down my searchables. Uh, mm. And that's it from us. We say bye bye. Ben, why don't I leave the the listeners with some quotes from famous Hollywood actor, singer, and and all round good egg and had a way. Go on. What is love, baby? Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Very good. That's uh There was a singer in the 80s called Hadaway, Ben. <laughs>